Hi, it's Romilly with Golden Circle Designs, and we're going to do yet another stitch today. Let's see if I can get better light in here. And, ah, there we go. So, today we're going to work on herringbone stitch, which is a basic crossed stitch, although it's not a cross stitch. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to work, this time we're going to work from the left to the right even though with our right hand normally we go from the right to the left because the stitches go backwards as you work. It's a line stitch. It's a crossed line stitch. You can make it as wide or as narrow as you like. So starting with the right hand, you know, back to that away, away spot. And we're going to start on this row right below the blue and I'm going to make it the size of this white line. Again, it can be as tall, as narrow, as wide as you want it. And we're going to make a cross. We're going to make a diagonal line with just a straight stitch. So there's your first line. And then you're going to, we came down here, so we're going to come back slightly, usually about half the way through the stitch, but not necessarily. It can be a third. And then we're going to make another diagonal stitch, making it a cross. Now this is going to be an oblong shaped cross rather than a square one, like you might be if you do cross stitch, which we'll actually get to a little later. And we we'll go down here and then come back again in general when I do it I tend to make this line and this point this point and this point equal so that the stitches stay straight So that's the same place as that one. And that's the stabbing method. With the stabbing method, you can go either direction you want, from left to right or right to left. But if you're going to sew, you want to start on the left and work right if you're using your right hand, because it's easier to push your, thre your thread backwards away from your hand. So. And there we go with the stitching. And you just make a long line. This is actually a a um, stitch that I do like to use the st the sewing method with, simply because it's faster and it's a little easier for me for, to um, make things the same size. Now, like I said, you can make it smaller. I can make it down to half size. We'll just slide down and do half. Or you can make them very tall and thin. You can close them so that they touch. If you make them very tall and thin, and close them and work them on the back of the fabric that's the basis for shadow work because you get a very thick color and then when you turn it over it sh it's a shadow from the back so that is herringbone stitch if you are a sewer and you work in costuming or work in hand sewing a lot in couture, they call it a catch stitch and it's often used in hems. So we'll take that out of the way and we'll switch to the left hand. Okay, we're back with the left hand for catch stitch or herringbone stitch. In embroidery it's generally known as herringbone because it kind of looks like a herringbone. And what we're going to do with the left hand is we're going to work from right to left. 
which is the opposite. And we're going to start on this side. And I'll pull it through. And we'll use the row below. What we just did. So, we're going to come up here and we're moving from le right to left. So with our left hand, we're going to make that diagonal stitch down. It can also be up for the right-handed one. I think I started with the up stitch. And we've got a diagonal stitch there. Need to get some pull, little pulls or lace this. And this comes up just a little bit, probably about halfway. And we're going to take that same angle and we're going to go down on the next one. So that's your basic herringbone stitch. They're just straight stitches. We're just lying, laying them into the thread, into the fabric, so that they alternate. Up one, and down one. And stitches can be big, small. And the reason we're working from right to left with our left-handed stitches because if we use the stitching motion we're still going to be pushing the needle from left to right. Just like this. Without looping the thread at all. We can make them tall and thin. Going this way. Play with these stitches. Always play with them. Because if you're doing surface embroidery and freestyle, freestyle surface embroidery, you can get so many different effects out of one stitch, even with the same thread. We can touch, we can stitch this so that it touches. which, as I said, in the right-handed stitch is the basis for shadow work, where you the stitching is all on the back of the fabric and you look through it. Or we can widen it out a little bit and make them small, make them short and wide. Only half, the th half of the white stripe. And that can be tight or wide as well. So play with it. Have fun. Herringbone is a fun and really versatile stitch. I'll put up the, the same photo in the blog that I used last week for um, feather stitch because I used the herringbone stitch for tentacles because all of these little spots reminded me of the little suction cups on, on octopuses, oct octopi or octopuses. So enjoy yourself, and we will see you next week. Thank you.